Good morning, Mission Control. The Real Martian here. As you can tell, I am feeling a lot better uh, for two reasons. One, uh, the flu that's been going around, uh, the virus is uh, headed out of my body. The super cure of echinacea and vitamin C kicked in and kept me from getting worse. A lot of people have had a lot worse than I have, so thank you, God, for keeping me out of that mess. Uh, second reason why is I got uh, the Mark II board fully connected, all the sensors tested, everything worked very, very nicely, and I've built the second Mark II board, so let me show you that. There's the second Mark II board. Turned out really nice, and one of the things I wanted to show is I've also added at the recommendation of some different followers uh, capacitors right here to each of the analog sensors uh, to help with uh, electromagnetic interference from the wires and such. So those are put in there to help out with that. So now we can show here we've got one and we've got two. Two of them. That's very nice. Another thing that I've done, here's the carbon monoxide sensor. And again, based off a recommendation from a user, instead of the light that I was going with, I've put on a little three volt uh, alarm. So as the CO uh, is detected, the alarm will go off in an audible sense. So you actually be able to hear it, know what to do. So they turn out really nice. I test them. Everything seems to be working correctly. And uh, I got all my sensor wires put together. There's the big pile of wires. So there's two of them, right? Here's lane twos. And here's lane three. All put together. Now you'll notice the ammonia and the nitrite sensors are empty. Uh, the reason why they're empty is... The original sensors I wanted to go with from Vernier, uh, I thought they would work. Uh, some of you recommended that I double check that. I'm really glad that you did. I reached out to their engineering support and they're like, yeah, how you want to use them really, it's not going to work and it's going to be a lot of effort. So decided not to go with them right now, but I can take two more analog sensors. So we're going to keep working and see what we can do to get those filled in. But in the meantime, we're good to go. Okay, so here we are, uh, we're doing the stuffing, and what I'm going to be doing, I'm just going to set the board in the back here. I got my CO monitor off to the side, and then I'm getting the wires to push over to uh, one side away from the electrical input here. And this is the only thing that's actually going to be outside of the box, is um, the power coming in. So, it turned out pretty nice. And that all fits in there like that, and that's going to be our control unit. That took two months <laughs> to figure this out. Oh, I'm going to be happy to install this. Pretty exciting. Uh, it's kind of surreal, actually. All the work that I put into this, all the things that I did wrong, but then persevering, not giving up, uh, even though I didn't know everything, I sat there and with the help of you guys, with God's blessings, God's guidance, and all the guidance that you guys have given me, been able to make it to this point. So I have loaded code to each of these, and we're pretty much ready to go out and put them in. So let's get out there and do it. We're gonna go ahead and start working on building the uh, holder for the sensors that uh, you've seen me working on building the computer board for. And one of the challenges that we have is those sensors need to sit uh, in the water. So if this is the water right here, sensors need to sit right on it. And that water level changes. So we have evaporation and then we also have just the natural pumping of water into the grow beds. So this water level is constantly doing that. And we want those sensors to stay, always stay at the same depth in the water and move with it. So the idea I'm going to use, I got some uh, foam board here, uh, it'll float. Uh, and we're going to cut it to the right size and uh, put some holes into it so that the sensors can sit right into it. And then, uh, so just it'll be a lot smaller piece here. And then we'll have some probably fishing line coming up. I mean, we don't need much to hold it, but two lines here, two lines here coming up and uh, being suspended from uh, the grow lanes. So we're going to go ahead and uh, get cutting on this.
a quick fit check. We got our <clears throat> our holes all put in, so two holes here, two holes here will be where we bring cord out and attach it to the grow bed. Here we've got our pH probe. And we have our fish tank temperature probe. Stick that down in there. And we have the dissolved oxygen probe. There we go, so there's our sensor float. And of course all these cables and everything will run up right into our main box. Well, it's taken so long to get to this point. I'm really quite excited about it. Um, kind of just a status update. I'm inside of the, uh, the HAB right now in lane two. Got my sensor box here that I'm ready to install. Uh, just gonna post it right here at the very beginning of the lane and I have power. Uh, my power cable that I made yesterday is right here, so it's good to go. Just gonna bolt it up here. I already got the holes pre-drilled in the back of this. Gonna mount it up and then we're gonna stuff the box and we're gonna start putting sensors in. Uh, really excited about that. Right now, I don't have a digital display out here, but it is 60 degrees inside the, uh, the lane right now. No heaters are going. Got some nice ambient light coming in from outside as well as the LEDs going. So things are uh, doing pretty good and we got production microgreens happening. So uh, I'm gonna stop talking and start working. That's cool. All right. So then we get that all up into there. That piece has to go down there. Make sure all the cables are over there. There we go. All right, get some screws. Got loose for right now. Wrap our power in. Boom! I see my blue LED light in there that tells me the life is good. So that's our first sensor install. Okay, looks like I forgot some of my Velcro. First one at temperature and humidity sensor. So that will start to detect the temperature and humidity in this lane. And I'm gonna Velcro it right off to the side here. So it'd be out of the way. Just forgot to get the Velcro when I came out here. Big moment. We've got everything plugged in here. And now, my cables, sorry, I'll show you the cables. Need to be cleaned up, tightened together with some zip ties. Here's our float. Okay. Let's see if it works. Look at that. Stays right in there. Don't even need the uh, don't even need the rope like I was thinking to hold it up. It flows perfectly. I like that right there. So what that gives us, that's dissolved oxygen, temperature, and pH, all now being sent to the server and recorded. Awesome. It's taken me months to get to this point, so it's pretty cool to see it all come together. Now we're not out of the woods yet. Well, I've tested everything in the house, uh, in the Martian lab, I should say, uh, and it all worked. We'll really know if it's functioning uh, correctly out here once we get it all plugged in and go check the readings on the server. In the meantime, I'm gonna go get lane three installed and then we'll head back up and see how things look. So, so this is a really big moment. Uh, right now, we're looking at the database that stores all the information. It's a PHP, uh, I'm sorry, um, PHP, it's a MySQL database. And what we're going to do here is we're going to look at ID and we're going to get the latest ones. And that's what we wanted to see right there. Okay, so we have par, we have pH, we have uh, lane 2 par, it's getting more, it's closer to the sun, that makes sense. Uh, the light could be right over the top of it right now. Dissolved oxygen looks a little bad. Uh, like the sensor may not be working on lane three, but on lane two, 
this looking pretty good there. So uh, if we hit refresh, we should get more every minute. It hasn't gone yet, so this one just happened at 12.01. So let's fast forward to 12.02. That's so freaking awesome. That one right there is probably a bad cable. I just made that one, so I'm guessing that's probably what the challenge is there. It's a very exciting moment right now. I just got everything hooked up. Uh, went inside and checked the server and everything except for one thing seems to be working and that's going to be I'm guessing this connection right here. I bet you it's a bad crimp So we're going to dig into that. And I see. just want to show you what it looks like. Uh, I got the velcro and everything put in final install so Here is the temperature and humidity sensor. It's just velcroed in place very easy to move around came out nice and then here is the PAR sensor velcroed in uh, as well. Really easy to move around if we need to. Big fan of magnets and Velcro. Very easy connectors, easy to manage. So uh, it's been a really cool experience getting this whole thing up and running. I'm really excited about it. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed these videos. If you like what you've seen, be sure to give us a thumbs up and hit subscribe. And if you want to get notified when I put up new videos, hit that bell to the left of the subscribe button. In the meantime, everybody, this is The Real Martian with automation. Out.